Hello! Welcome to a very special episode of Guides to the Unknown. I'm Kristen. I'm William. And you might notice that it sounds a little bit different tonight. Uh, it looks a little bit different because William and I did a little on-location work, you could say. Boy, did we. Yep. So we went to the Paranormal Bookstore in Asbury Park, New Jersey for a free screening of a UFO documentary called Travis, The True Story of Travis Walton. Yeah. And now we are on our way home and we're just going to tell you guys about the documentary and what the story is in the documentary and then talk to each other a little bit about what we thought. Yeah, it was cool. It was it's evidently one of the bigger sort of like UFO cases, one mm -hmm. of the most heavily documented UFO abduction cases in history. Yeah. How did you how did you hear about this free showing in the first place? Because I follow um, the Paranormal Bookstore. You can look at you can look for them on Instagram at the Paranormal Museum because it's this cool bookstore that um, also has a museum in it. Um, and I follow them on Instagram and Facebook. Um, I've gone to a couple of their walking ghost tours that they do around town in Asbury Park. And um, I've, I've been to the shop before, um, one time, just kind of browsed around, like, really briefly before a tour, because um, I also did, they, they do kind of, like, cool, like, themey tours. I did um, a pub, a haunted pub crawl tour with them was the first thing that I did, like, it's probably, like, eight years ago now or something, and it was really neat. Like, there was a tour guide, but it would bring you to different um, bars around Asbury Park, where literally one of the employees of the bar would come out and tell you about a ghost story that they'd experienced. That's awesome. It was awesome. That's really so, cool. Yeah, I I follow them and they had posted that they were doing this. Okay. So um, I messaged Will and I was like, hey, why don't we go do this and watch this movie on Wednesday night and then just like record an episode off the cuff talking about it and it might be like a little fun. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. It was cool. So it was a, it was a free showing mm -hmm. and the, the director producer Jennifer Stein was there. Mm -hmm. uh, she talked a little bit before and after the movie, which was really cool. Yeah. It was awesome to see sort of like a personalized take on yep. the story itself because otherwise it would have been something that like we would have covered here on the show anyway, I think. Yeah. Um, That's why I thought it was a good idea, because I'd heard of this before. I knew, basically, that it was, like, a big deal. Yeah. And I was like, I would talk about that. So, like, if if there's just, like, a more personal way to get into it, like, why not? Yeah. Plus, yeah. it's cool, too, because I know for sure, for me, like, I'm so... Uh, likely to just sort of hear about something and be like, I guess I could go to that showing, mm -hmm. or I could sit here in the basement and do nothing. I know. And I feel like, like, nine out of ten times I vote in favor of don't actually leave the house and go do that. So it was kind of nice to actually, like, break that I streak. I, and, I, yeah. I guarantee you, because I'm the same way, if it weren't for the... If we didn't have a, a show that we do this kind of stuff on, I yeah. wouldn't have gone. Because it was for the purposes of being able to, like, do it for the show and do something interesting for you guys to listen to and watch. Yeah. Then it made me do it. So, yeah. God bless Guides the Unknown, because I definitely would have done the same thing. I'd be like, oh, that's neat. Yeah. We talked about that before. I was like, somebody's going to have a lot of fun doing that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for sure. Plus, I like the idea of, like... You know, we, we've only done it, I think, once before, where mm -hmm. we sort of, like, got out of... The, you know, quote unquote. Yes, studio. I know. I was thinking about that too. And I like that. Yeah, I like. It was fun. We went to go find a Toynbee tile. Yeah, you yeah. know. And so I feel like I do feel like shows like this. I, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know if this is something that I've ever actually experienced, but I know that other podcasters would be like, if it doesn't sound as great as it could possibly sound, if it doesn't mm -hmm. look as good as it can possibly look, why would you put it out? Oh. And so, you know, if there are people out there that like aren't into the way this sounds right now, I get you. But it's kind of nice to periodically yeah. do something that breaks the mold and, and experiment a little bit. So, like, yeah. the one time we ended a show by going to look for a Toynbee tile right. in Edison, New Jersey, it was, like, kind of weird. You hear the sound of the wind mm -hmm. whipping around the microphone. Yeah. And now you and I are sitting in a car. We're going to talk about a crazy UFO story. I'm really into that. It, yeah, me too. Well, also, yeah. it, like, keeps it fun and genuine for us because we're, we're doing what we want to do and not yeah. being like, oh, we can't do that because we're beholden to, like, making it sound good. To the good. formula or you something. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's just, like, keeps it, keeps it fresh and funky. Totally. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, we went to the, the Paranormal Museum. Mm -hmm. uh, it was very cool. I'd never been there before. Yeah. I know that Asbury Park has, like, a long history of, like, like ghost sightings and UFO sightings and stuff, but mm -hmm. yeah, never been there before, which yeah. is very cool. They set up a room on the second story with a bunch of rows of chairs, and they had a full screen with a projector that they were that they set up. It yeah. was I thought like no better setting to watch some crazy UFO documentary than in this place. 
Completely. And I really liked that it was very DIY. It, yeah. was, it really was just like you going up into the second floor of a bookstore and I'm setting up a screen projector like when you were in school. Yeah, like, yeah, kind yeah. of. It yeah, was, but with it was like awesome. heavy red velvet curtains that yeah. cordoned off sections. Yes. It was really cool. It was like dramatic. It was it interesting. Had, like the, the like a really cool atmosphere, like a perfect thing for it. Yeah, it was yeah. sweet. So, so, cool. so, all right. So the documentary itself, the yes. story itself, it's about Travis Walton mm -hmm. and essentially his co-workers, his, yep. his buddies. Uh, they were working on like a... They were loggers. Yeah, they were loggers mm -hmm. in Snowflake, Arizona. Yeah, which is a great name. Awesome town name. Yeah. And uh, uh, this was November 5th, 1975. Uh, they were out there. Oh, impressive. That right? Yeah. The date. yeah, Pretty yeah, good. yeah. They were out there, they were working, and they saw through the trees a bright light. Mm hmm. And for whatever reason, it turns out that it was uh, uh, Travis Walton's thing, I guess, yeah. when there was any sign of danger. We found out after the documentary. Yeah, that was definitely a perk of going to an event like this because. Yeah. This they had like a kind of a little sort of Q and A, just kind of like rap sesh after the screening of the movie. And so what Will's about to say is something that the producer Jennifer talked about after the movie. It's not in the movie. It was like a little like um, special feature. Yeah, a little bonus. Yeah. Because one of the weird things, part of the the story is that they see this bright light in the trees. Travis jumps out of the car and goes chasing. Like after it, like yeah, running like, towards it, which immediately any person I think would go like, dude, go the opposite yeah, way. Like who would do that? Get out of there. Why are you running toward it? But it turns out he was like 22 years old. Yeah. He was a young guy and he had a habit of just sort of being like kind of, you know, wild and crazy. What, what, what they, wild and crazy. Yeah. Like they had seen a grizzly bear one time. He jumped out of the car to try to like scare it away. Yeah. Like just, you know, like goofball kid yeah. stuff. He, uh, he, there are wild horses mm -hmm. in those woods. He tried to, uh, he tried to tame a wild horse Yeah, and basically like lead it into town by tying, uh, like a rope to the bumper of the car and having it like tied around the horse. Yeah. <laughs> because then he'd be like, oh, sweet. Now I just have a horse. I got a horse now. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy. So anyway, he runs towards the light, which leads to like a little clearing, a little grove of trees where he sees uh, a flying saucer. Yeah. Right. Like exactly yeah. what you'd imagine. That's the best part of this. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, UFO stuff I'm fascinated by because I believe... I believe in the limit, limitless possibilities mm -hmm. uh, of, like, uh, just statistically, there's somewhere out there something is going on. Yeah. I don't necessarily believe that they are little gray aliens yeah. that have come to Earth and all that stuff. It's interesting, mm -hmm. but I love it when there's a story like this, and it's exactly the thing yeah. that you've always heard of. Yeah. So it's a flying saucer, a little, you know, hamburger-shaped mm -hmm. thing with a dome on top, mm -hmm. and it's emitting this crazy sound. Yeah, they said that it was, like, both super low and bassy, like, where you feel it. Like, the the guys who were in the car that Travis jumped out of, so they were, like, the guy, had, he was, like, I have my hands on the steering wheel, and I can feel the vibration. My elbow was touching the window. I can feel the vibration. So it was both super low and super high at the same time just like mash together basically yeah. like at the limits of human perception yeah, yeah like frequencies just like like at the limit of us being able to hear it up here and the limit of us being able to hear it down here like jiminy glick yes the frequency was up here but it was also very low down here <laughs> <laughs> it was a jiminy glick experience yeah, the, the full... jiminy glick experiment oh my gosh yeah. uh and he said that he could like feel the sound mm -hmm. that it was like rippling through yeah. The air. Yeah. And so now we're from the perspective of the other guys. They see him approaching this light and suddenly he drops. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. They they see him approaching the light. Then he kind of like crouches down and stuff because he's trying to like see what it is and also not get too close to it. Right. And when he stood up, the way he stood up got him in the light's beam. So he f went up into the light beam. Like they said that it looked like his body was just like just jelly, like lifeless. Like he was just totally limp and going up into the light beam. And all of a sudden he just dropped and crumpled on the ground. Like he dropped so hard that he like bounced 
and God. crumpled and just looked dead. And so they freaked out. Yeah, yeah. And the guy who was driving gunned it to leave because they were like, oh my God, what's happening? Like, we're all going to die. Yeah. And drove away. And they drove a little bit. And then, like, you know, th- so there were like six guys in this car because it's like this crew of workers, basically, who had all come out to the woods together to work. And they were like hanging out or something. And then they were going home. So it's like a ton of guys. So some of the guys in the car are like, we have to go back. Like, we have to go back to get Travis. Like, this is, this is crazy, you know? Like, we just, like, left him for dead. So, like, all right, we'll turn around. So they turned... Wait, right? They turned around to go back. I think he, so. I think he, they... Yeah. And, and they... He wasn't there. He wasn't there. And I think, didn't they say that they could see something flying away? Like, wasn't there, like... I don't remember. Maybe, maybe. it was one of the theories yeah. of it then. But, like, yeah. I thought there was a thing about, like, they saw something, like... Like dart away, like the the Actually, UFO taking right. off. Yeah. Yes, I think. So, right, I think they said it went like super fast. Like yeah. it was there and then like gone. Just gone. Yeah. So now there is no sign of Travis Walton. Right. And these other guys go back to town, and what happens next is basically five days of of like absolute chaos, trying to figure out. Uh, uh, what did these six guys do? Why are they talking about UFOs? They're obviously lying. They obviously murdered uh-huh. Travis Walton. There is no sign of him. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, you know, obviously if they come back talking about abductions and getting hit by beams of light, yeah. they're covering for something. They've concocted right. this story all together. Right. They end up taking uh, lie detector tests, uh-huh. which they all pass. Yeah. Which is incredible. Well, um, five of them passed, and then one of them was right. inconclusive. Like, but they even argue that like his was inconclusive because he was like all like stressed out and aggressive. Yes. Yeah. yeah like he was like not cooperating. It wasn't. Inc- yeah. It was like it was inconclusive because it like wasn't be. It wasn't allowed to be done correctly, basically, yeah. because the guy was like all freaked out. Exactly. So. As all of this is happening and as people are starting to get, like, set into their minds that, like, these guys are going to go to jail. Yeah. They're probably going to get hanged. Yeah. Um, that's what they did back then. Yeah. Yeah. Five days have passed since Travis Walton went missing in the woods, seemingly abducted by a UFO. And by the way, they, like, did searches for him in the area and everything and didn't find anything. His footprints stopped. Yeah. Like, it was just very weird. And then... Travis Walton comes walking into town. Uh huh. Alive. Yeah. He's alive. Well, he's found in a phone booth, like at the edge of town, basically. Right. Um, because he woke up and like w- like woke up on a highway and was like, "Oh my god, what the hell!" And like made his way to a phone to call his brother, and then I think collapsed or something like that. Yeah, something like that. So they went to pick him up. Like I don't know for some reason that detail really got me. Like for you to find the person who's missing forever in this random like like um like dock of phone booths like yeah. three phone booths on the edge of town like well it kind of makes sense yeah. right like it was trying to make contact mm-hmm. in some way yeah in more so ways than one actually yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh so after all of that after being missing for five days travis walton is alive mm-hmm. and uh he does not know that five days have passed right he's he's lost weight he's lost like 10 pounds mm-hmm. he's got a full beard yes um and he's like well let's i mean it was five days of beard five growth, days of beard whatever yeah <laughs> But still, because we're like talking about like crazy par- paranormal stuff, you could be like, oh my god, what happened to time that he had grown a full beard? Just Supernatural beardy. Yeah. Um, and yeah, he's 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 acting as if he's, you know, something happened to him earlier this evening. Yeah, right. And his brother goes like, no, like, it's been five days. Yeah. Where have you been? And he can't quite piece together the full five days, but what he does recall is waking up in a room with a bright light over his face uh and two people being in the room yeah. with uh like poorly defined features yes now the documentary itself yes i was i was pumped to uh-huh. see this uh-huh in the documentary itself they do they do a reenactment right so it is uh almost like a first person perspective you wake up there's a giant light above you yeah, and you start like- looking around and then into focus come two shapes mm-hmm. of gray aliens. Yeah, two grays. Uh, with like straight up Star Wars looking gray aliens. Yeah. I was so thrilled to see the like production value of actually having yeah. like alien suits. Yeah. At this moment, like they didn't play it with vagaries of like. Because I feel like that's one way you could do it, right? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, 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 this is a story that's all about like, uh, uh, 
having to believe somebody's first person account of something that seems like it was obviously right. overwhelmingly stressful and difficult, you could play that as being like, he, uh, you know, the power of suggestion put this idea of aliens in his head. So you right. might film that in a way where it's like, we don't know what they are one way or another. Right. They might have been aliens, they might have been people, but we just keep them blurry and in the background. But right. bam, nope. Yeah. Gray yeah. aliens yeah. are in the Travis Walton the documentary. Classics. What you think of, the emoji you know and love. It was wonderful. Yes. I really enjoyed seeing that. Mm -hmm. um, almost, I love a classic gray alien. Yeah, oh, 100%. Yeah. We, we talked a lot about, uh, before the movie started, we were talking about just kind of like, we were just sort of chatting mm -hmm. uh, uh, with uh, Kathy. Yep, mm -hmm. who, Kathy Kelly. Who runs the paranormal museum we were talking about movies and stuff mm -hmm. we were talking about the witch yeah and one of the things that i really like about the witch is that they take this idea of like the yeah <laughs> and like on a broomstick witch yeah like a classic witch and make it yeah terrifying rather than just like the sort of caricature that we've all, all kind of gotten used to and kind of accepted and that they're like you know like kind silly of goofy which is a halloween and everything yeah. it was that kind of like it shared all the same dna as that kind of witch yeah yeah but was Horrifying. I could I could go for something like that with an yeah. alien movie. Yeah, me like too. there are like some really like out there alien movies now, like Annihilation I... and stuff, where they're like crazy special effects fests. Yeah, I could go for classic flying saucer, uh, gray alien with big almond shaped black eyes. I would love that. How great would that be? Yeah, I would love that. And have it be like terrifying. I I love a classic alien thing like that. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, that's yeah. <laughs> really. I was just, I was just pumped. But no, to see it was, the movie. yeah, it was cool to see that. And then the, also the weird thing with his abduction abduction story was that he said. So he said he woke up and he saw those grays or whatever. And then he gets up. They don't like really stop him or anything. And he goes out into a corridor and he's like walking down the corridor. And then it brings him to a room with a chair and some like almost like a little command center, like a few buttons and things like that. And then this man, this human man walks into the room <laughs> wearing like a helmet like a like a clear glass helmet sort of thing like and, a like an astronaut like yeah. the dome mm -hmm. the dome helmet thing you think of yeah and travis is trying to talk to him being like hey what, what's going on here whatever but the guy just isn't answering him and travis said that he kind of assumed that he couldn't hear him because of that dome helmet yeah so he's just like following him and still talking to him and they walk into another room with a woman who is wearing the same sort of getup, another human person. And what happens? I think that he's just like, what's going on here, guys? Yeah, and I, I think, think maybe so. that's they, all he can remember. I think that was all that he was able to remember before yeah. he woke up. Yeah. Yeah. But then that also implies that that, that, that that in and of itself is also very Star wars -y. Or I guess more to the point now. I mean, I feel like this should all be updated. Like, Star Wars mm -hmm. is still very popular, whatever. Yeah. But that feels very Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh... How so? I mean, I've only seen the first Guardians of the Galaxy and once. So okay, well, like about like the the sort of modern humans mm -hmm. being in this intergalactic setting. Oh, okay. yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Star Lord coming down to Earth. Yeah. And being like, oh man, we hit this guy with our car. We got to fix him up. Yeah. You yeah. Know what I mean. Okay, so what William is saying, what he's going to is that so Travis Walton came to think like you know it's kind of a progression and the documentary goes over a lot of different things which we'll go back to but basically he said that when everything first happened he was like you know was this malevolent like was I taken for some sort of purpose like I've been like snatched you know what I mean and stolen and that he's come around to the idea that the whole thing was sort of a mistake yeah that he was in the wrong place at the wrong time and he kind of likened it to like or maybe Jennifer likened it to this afterward when we were so, talking. Yeah. I don't think it was during the documentary. I think it was when Jennifer was talking. So she likened it too, which worked perfectly um, with his thoughts, that it was almost as if he were a deer hit by a car. Like he had seen something in the woods and he ran to it. And something about that light beam and what was going on from their ship that he walked into injured him basically. And so rather than just leaving him, they picked him up to fix him. So they weren't abducting him, they were saving him so that he could then live. Like making it right. Making it right. So she likened it to like, it's as if you hit a deer and you picked up the deer and brought it to the vet. Like that's what he thinks that maybe the 
aliens or whatever it was were doing for him. Yeah. Yeah. Which Trying to make really good on like having accidentally hurt him. With which is also like a like a really interestingly charitable interpretation of these I sorts of know. events. No, it was really I would that would never have occurred to me. No and way. I, that must happen with just like like, you know, forty years of thought about yeah. it, basically. And he also has kind of come to the conclusion, at least for himself, or the idea because a question that I had um, that I was going to ask her when the documentary was over, but that he ended up kind of answering for me is like, so what do you think they were even doing there anyway? Like, why was there uh, yeah. an alien craft just like in the wood? Like, what was their purpose being there? And he basically said that he thinks it was maybe like a machinery malfunction. Like they were doing <laughs> something right, right. anyway, but they were sort of like in that clear. Oh, cause, cause the noise, they thought the noise sounded like not, n well, obviously not normal, but mechanical they, failure, mechanical failure. Yeah. Kind of thing. Um, and he thought that they were maybe even around the area because his theory about UFOs being spotted by people in general is that it is very, very slow desensitization in the most benign way they can. So like they kind of like want people to know that they're out there because maybe eventually somehow we will come together or just coexist or just be yeah. aware of each the other. The concept of them being near us will be normalized. Right. And yeah. so they're easing in right now by just like showing peaks, not doing anything to us, but like letting some you know, let's get the yeah. idea going that we're out there without, like, really stepping on any toes. Also an interpretation that I've never heard. Me neither. In this kind of thing. I know. Uh, very interesting. I know. Yeah. I thought it was really interesting. I think, uh, above all else, the thing that I enjoyed about the story was they point out... So, like, these guys... Uh, uh, the loggers who were believed to have murdered Travis Walton... Um, and then, you know, they're telling their story about we saw a UFO, basically. Yeah. And then five days later, he shows up also talking about UFOs. Right. Like, either they concocted it ahead of time, right. or it's just like, what a crazy coincidence that that's the explanation for both of these things. It's a UFO. I right. don't know. But uh, most people would look at that story and immediately go to, like, all right, well, they're trying to get away with something, maybe break their contract that they had to do the logging in that area. Yeah, it was a theory that people had. Or maybe just, like, make money on the story. But, like, for real, when you watch this documentary, if you look at Travis Walton, they pointed out at one point, they're like, he's not enjoying any of this. Yeah, I feel like that's very clear. Like, it wasn't the kind of bluster of somebody being like, look, I didn't want all this to happen to me, but it did. Yeah. You know, like, he seems to genuinely... He says it multiple times, and you believe it. He's like, if I could make this never have happened, I absolutely would. Like, yeah. it was very damaging. Yeah, and like... Basically, and you believe it. Like, these people are just very... I really believed them. I believe them too. Like I one really of the guys, did. one of the guys moved far away and operated under his middle name yeah. so that people wouldn't know who he was. This, by the way, the reason that that's even worth pointing out, they show newspaper articles that are like really aggressive about this. Like one way or another, even if you think that this guy is like lying or whatever, it's just like who cares enough to like aggressively go after him? Yeah. Some of the headlines were just like spaceman still, you know, believes that it, he really walked on the moon, whatever the hell. Yeah, yeah. And like just like, you know, you know, insultingly calling him like space voyager. Oh, you know what I mean? <laughs> like totally. really it was the and by the way, I would love to see those headlines in newspapers. Oh, absolutely. I, I wish we had those kinds of headlines. Yeah. As much as it's like... Although we kind of... I mean, it's really crazy. Like, we've talked about it on the show before. Not to that degree, like Space Boy. But, like, I still think it is so nuts that we are not constantly talking about that story that came out in December yeah, yeah. in the New York Times about the UFOs. Yeah. I... I, it's the same thing I said on that episode. It's it's like a long time ago. Well, not a long time ago. You guys could find it. There's an episode where we talk about um, UFOs, and I think it's the Toy B Tiles episode, actually. Is it the Toy B Tiles episode? I kind of think so. It might be. I That's think so. interesting. But anyway, I mean, it's the same thing. I'm just like, why is everybody not talking about this? I don't understand. <laughs> you know why I think it might be the Toy B Tiles <laughs> episode? What? Is at the end of that show, when we're in the parking lot in Edison, That's so we're screaming to the sky. Yeah. Were we screaming at aliens? We're going, Toy B! <laughs> Screaming. We're going like, what are you waiting for? Oh, Which, maybe. Oh, yeah, although, that's right. Although that is also a, a I Know What for You my... Did Last Summer reference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So yeah, I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Yeah, sure. yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I completely agree. Why aren't we constantly talking about that? Um, it's nuts. Yeah, it is. It's 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 crazy. Yeah. And some of the folks that we met tonight, it's really cool. Like they're they're talking about like the next like MUFON. Mm -hmm. Convention, which is, I forget what the actual. Uh, I don't remember. It's a very well known UFO like the, group. I yeah, can't Yeah, UFO Network, something. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jennifer Stein, the director of the documentary, is uh, a representative of MUFON as well. Yeah. Like, we we met, like, really interesting, interested people. Yes. Right? Yeah. Uh -huh. um, and, like, it was just cool to even hear what they talk about. To each I other, know. just being like, yeah, at this conference, that guy, we talked about him on the show that we did about the New York Times story. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, who was from, like, the NSA or whatever. Yeah. Who came His forward. Luis Elizondo. Yeah, Luis right? Elizondo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's going to be speaking at this convention that they're going to. Yeah. Next, uh, Travis Walton is going to be there yeah. as well. It was Travis just like, Walton was on the Low Files, which Kristen, I think that you know that I love. Kristen realized that too late. Yeah. We were in the car already, headed back to town, and Kristen goes like, "He looked really familiar. I kind of think he was in the Low Files, yeah. the the show that Rob Lowe did with his sons, where they traveled the country, just you know, investigating paranormal did events." Did we freak out about that on Guide to the Unknown, or was it Book Club Schmook Club time? I kind of think it was Book Club Schmook Club. It might have been Book Club Schmook Club time. I yeah, think our, it was. Our I, think it was a, I think it was a fun summer thing. I love the Low Files. If I haven't talked about it on here, it was a show where Rob Lowe and his two charming sons with a great familial relationship um, like investigate a different paranormal thing every episode. They're like eight episodes yeah. and it's so great. Google it. Look for it on demand. I'm not going to tell you any illegal channels. I know that I usually do that. It was a very charming show. It was fantastic and Rob Lowe, I guess, was able to pull some strings because he's in the biz yeah. and get to talk to Travis Walton, who doesn't like to really do that many appearances and things yeah. like that, at least on I, TV. And now I have to rewatch that episode because now I have like a, a better understanding of who that was. I know. Um, yeah, one, so one of the other crazy things um, about the documentary that I thought was like really weird and Everyone kept talking about it as being like because of uh, uh, exposure to. Uh, oh, are you about to talk about the tree thing? The trees. I <laughs> loved. This was so cool. Uh, it, like they talked about how it was because of radiation, but I, I don't know if you did this too. I was like, that would be the scientific explanation to be like exposure to radiation did the following thing to trees. Yeah. But I was more like, no, 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 no. There was yeah. a UFO parked in the middle of a grove of trees, yeah. and the trees started to grow toward it. That was how I felt. Is that how you felt yes, at all? Yes, they were like leaning in toward yeah. it. Yes. So what it was... They are like drawn. What it was is that the it's trees so in that area... Like, I, really think of it as like the face of a clock. Yeah. Right? A sky, bird's eye view of this grove of mm -hmm. trees. Now imagine that at every point on the clock, uh, uh, 1 through 12, there's a tree... So, in, you know, in a circular yeah. pattern, those trees, the ones closest to the, where the UFO was, that's a big forest. There, yeah. are, there are further trees emanating, you know, outward from yeah. there. But those trees, those twelve trees closest to the center, have an accelerated rate of growth. Yeah, this is a true thing, yes. and you can look yes. it up. They, they are like growing at like thirty times the I think normal it was 36. rate. I insane. Yeah. But the craziest part of it is that only the sides facing where the UFO was. Right. The in the inner rim of the tree to where the UFO was. Only that is growing. Yeah. So in a weird way, the base of the tree, what used to be a circle, is now almost like a football. Yeah. Because the tree is reaching in, in toward towards where area. the UFO was. And so yeah, they're saying that like they've done research and looked at what happened in Chernobyl mm -hmm. uh, and seen that there's a similar thing that's gone on there with accelerated rate of growth of trees there yes. because of exposure to radiation. So maybe that's the same thing here. Right. But yeah. Or some weird alien sort of thing that we don't even yeah, know about. Exactly. I, yeah. I for sure went more the sort of like mm -hmm. bending the laws of nature. The whole thing bends laws of nature. So like, I don't really understand. I think it's just probably like assimilating things to a way that you can understand it or whatever, yeah, which, yeah, I mean, yeah. which fully makes sense. I know. But like, why are we jumping to radiation? I know. And it, I think like, it is also telling that both of our thing is to go for, no, 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 no. Don't explain it. 
Yeah. Make it unexplainable. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's what I like. Well, the whole thing is unexplainable. Like, I understand that you want to make it explainable, but, like, let's call a spade a spade. Can yeah. you understand any of this? I know. Maybe, I mean, maybe it is radiation, but, like, what leads us to believe that? Yeah, true. I guess just that, I mean, well, I guess the chicken or the egg thing, but I'm sure there is an answer to it just in my own head. It's a chicken or the egg thing. Like, did they look up trees that had alarming growths of uh, rates of growth and they found a Chernobyl thing so they're like oh radiation right. or were they looking into radiation's effect on trees and then came to the conclusion that way uh, well yeah and I also feel like you know maybe part of it is also just assuming that oh, my god <laughs> wait they know where we are so guys you know that we are <laughs> sitting in a parking lot as we record facing a Taco Bell drive through to mooch off of the light of the cars and they're a group of wild teenagers who are walked up to the drive through window. They're holding up a line of cars. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Let's see if I can get this yeah. real quick. Sorry, this won't be good audio. Does that look like it's pointed at them? Can you see? <laughs> no. can oh, you I think, yeah, I think it is. Um, that's funny. Um, but yeah, so like, I feel like even the, the radiation thing is making a, a very simple assumption that like aliens need a similar fuel type that we use. Right. 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 Nuclear power. That's universally understandable, but also like harkens yeah, back to the sort of like nuclear age yeah. of being like nuclear power is the most extreme version of power and mm -hmm. it's deadly and someday it's going to kill us all. Right. So aliens must have tamed it and use it commonly. Right. Like I feel like that's how... That's what the, it means when we talk about UFOs using nuclear uh -huh. power. And so I feel like it it's just baked into the concept that, like, yeah, UFO was there, weird rate of growth on these right. trees. It was about the radiation. Right. But, like, yeah, I really do feel like if aliens are out there, maybe they are not even, like, adhering to, like, Newtonian law, well, so whatever. Say, they I mean, might I've... be from another, like, another level of space. You know what I mean? <laughs> Maybe Absolutely. they don't even, like, fly up and out of our atmosphere and to another planet. Yeah. Maybe they, like, yes. and zip to another plane of reality. Completely. You know what I mean? Who the hell knows? I absolutely know what you mean. I think it's almost just basically, like, best guess. Yeah. Our, our best guess is that it's about nuclear power. I mean, what what else... Could it, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, true. And it's also, it kind of plays, oh God, it also kind of plays, what's he doing? He's not going over here. No, he? he's not. He's not. Oh, okay, good. Um, now they're just walking. So these kids, they've gone up to the drive through window and I guess tried to convince them to. They're like right in front of the car right now. Yeah. <laughs> cool. They seem like Dorcas Malorcas. Yeah, fun. totally. Harmful, um, harm, harmless. No, but it looked like he was walking to the car. I know, I know. Um, what the hell was I gonna say? They're really offended that they can't walk through the drive-through lane. Is what's going on right now? Yeah. What they're doing? This is awesome too, because it's like, what, what person in their late teens mm -hmm. hasn't thought about doing this? Oh yeah, I've, have you ever actually done it? I don't think I ever I actually either. did. Yeah. But countless people have. What these kids are doing at this Taco Bell right now by trying to walk through and hold up a line of cars is actually upholding yeah. like generations old traditions. That's true. <laughs> right? You know what? That's like, true. They're going to sit It's ancestral. Yeah, they're yeah. going to see kids do this again someday in the future. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know and be like, "Oh, I did that." Yeah. And it doesn't work. You're not supposed to do that. Yeah, you're not allowed to do that. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> I know. Anyway. Um so all also, a big part of the documentary was talking about, um, which I thought was really interesting, like the idea of debunkers and one in particular. So like not just skeptics and people who are looking at it, people who are specifically kind of like attacking. And in this case, doing anything the, they can to shut down the story. Yeah, right. They, so in this case, they're specifically talking about a guy named Philip Class with a K, um, who was apparently really well known, and he was a was his main job a journalist. Is that was is that what his deal was? Yeah, I don't know. So he basically was like harassing um, the six guys and Walton um, about their story and how they must be lying and all this stuff. Um, he tried to pay off one of the guys to get him to like recant the story and admit that it was a lie he offered him like ten thousand dollars ten thousand dollars in the in 70s the 70s which was like a lot of money <clears throat> what did you think about the idea of him working for like the cia in some capacity i thought it was interesting i did too at first like when they started talking we'll explain it but like at first when they started talking about it, i was like they, they always think that there's somebody's for the cia right. but when they were going more into it i was like 
that tracks. And like, I, the way that I feel about the CIA and the NSA and like kind of like the more secretive gov- government agencies is that I think that I have some knee jerk skepticism about it, but then I'm like, but it is a thing. Like that is absolutely a real thing. Yeah. Somebody has to be doing these jobs. Oh, yeah. And we've known, we've heard about stories in the past that are verified about like secret agents in positions that you wouldn't expect them to be in. Like yep. it sounds so fantastical and movie like that you wouldn't believe it, but the movie's got the idea from the real, the, yeah. the reality of but it. But I think even to follow from that, I think the reality, the, the real version of those things that are made so grandiose in the movies are a lot more mundane in real life where it's like my job is to follow up on claims of UFO sightings what that means is I sit around and read like a thousand reports yeah. and uh, 99.99999% the second I look at them I go next right next next and the point zero one that I look at that interests me is me usually just going like huh that's kind of cool I get maybe well, maybe I'll make a phone call. Like I don't know. I feel like it's like very mundane. Yeah. But it's still someone's job right. in the government to follow up on UFO yes. sightings. Yeah. Totally. So the idea that um, a lot of people had about this guy Philip Class was that not that he was a CIA operative who then went into journalism and was using that platform to like go after people who um, claimed UFO sightings, it was more that that was already his bent yeah. and that the CIA, CIA got in touch with him to kind of like fund him debunking these people and discrediting them because it's the idea of aliens is scary to people. So the idea was that, um, for, for a couple of reasons, like they, they did have, if it wasn't, you know, Everything would be faked, obviously, but they did have a memo from like J. Edgar Hoover yeah. about Philip Class, yeah, yeah. which like kind of leads some lends some greens to it. And also, like, where did he get the ten thousand dollars to offer this guy? Because that was like a lot of money at that time. Yeah. So people were like, that could, they, there it's were. It's not things... just some frivolous small thing. Yeah. No, there were things that did seem to link him to the CIA, and then the money was kind of weird. So it does seem like that guy may have had some government funding to shut down ideas of UFOs and aliens. Yeah. And. I thought it was, I I can't remember who was talking about it. It was one of the talking heads in the documentary. I liked their idea or thoughts on why the government wouldn't want us to know about um, alien life on other planets. Um, One of the ideas was that, like, it would... It would cause people to identify, I mean, the word is funny, but like, I'll get into the thing, to identify as earthlings, like that there are people on earth and then there is like some sort of force out there basically. And us all joining together and thinking like, we're all in this together. Like as far as like earth, earthlings, that sort of in a way destroys boundaries. Like we don't necessarily have countries and states and things like that if we are all one and that's very threatening to leaders and things like that. Yeah. Exactly. Like that could lead to kind of like anarchy in a sense. Which is interesting because I've commonly thought, not that this, I'm not saying this is a unique thought, but I, like I have thought that same thing that, you know, millions of people have of like, it would be really great if aliens made contact because all of a sudden the infighting that we do down here would seem so much smaller mm-hmm. and more so much more insignificant yeah. that we might all just go like, you know, as corny as it is to say, like stand hand in hand. And, like, now turn our attentions to, like, what is going on, like, yes. outside of our atmosphere. That's actually different. Like, we make all these differences between each other, like, races and stuff like that and political parties. Like, if there was something else otherworldly, that would actually be undeniably different yeah. compared to, like, the BS crap. That yeah, exactly. We, you know, and it's divide like over. a big plot of, like, Watchmen, mm-hmm. that, that book, the idea of, like... Oh, yeah, the the doomsday clock and the countdown to nuclear war, which That's is going right. to annihilate everybody and one person who's like, you know what? I'm going to concoct a scheme to make us all afraid of extraterrestrials so that we will stop fighting amongst each other. And it's oh, like, yeah. like because of that, I think I always viewed that as being like, that's a good thing yeah. to want to be afraid of Martians rather than being afraid of each other. Uh, yeah, the people who live on the other side of whatever border. Yeah. Um, but I never really considered that from the perspective of the people in power. Yeah. And how the idea of being like, well, now we're going to lose American pride and we're going to have like 
pride about Earth. Yeah, global pride. Yeah, and yeah. that is not like marketable, desirable. Right. It 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 That's weakens. Yeah, it's threatening in its unity, it's which is stupid. Very stupid. Yeah. Very interesting. I yeah. had never considered that angle before. Me neither. This really gave me a lot of UFO angles that I never thought of before. Yeah, it was pretty cool. It really was. Yeah, I I I, I really enjoyed it. I did too. It was a unique experience. Yeah. Uh, and it was something that like yeah I wouldn't typically have gone out to do. Same. And I feel like that's got to be true of like everybody, right? Especially now it's like like how many times have you heard about somebody who's like holding an open mic night mm -hmm. in town and you don't go? Yeah. Or like, you know, somebody's trying to do this like sort of like odd interesting event and you don't go mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't go and then it just sort of stops happening. And it's like I've I done that know. so many times myself. Yeah. Where I've thought about being like there's a there's an open mic night in our town mm -hmm. and I think about going all the time and I never have once. When is that? Is Wednesday nights. Wednesday nights at the uh, the bar. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Um and it's just like it's kind of nice to to go and experience it, especially like yeah. in the world of horror. Yeah. Like I feel like there are so few things where it's like, like there's a horror convention in Edison every year. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I really kind of want to go to that. Uh, me next too. Time. I, we've. T I think that we couldn't go this year because I think I remember us talking about that and we were like, oh, let's go. We want to do that, but it, we we couldn't do yeah, it. Yeah, I think for the past couple of years, like yeah. it was just like on that weekend there was something that I couldn't change, whatever. Yeah. But it is like, uh, like I had a good enough time tonight that like. It makes me want to do things like that more. Like, it was a really interesting experience to be with other people talking about that kind of stuff. And even like you said, just like, at the end of it, when she was, you know, accepting questions and people were talking and stuff, it was a small group of people, um, and Will and I just listened. And it was even just really interesting to eavesdrop yeah. on other people having that conversation, because I see it online and everything, and... You know, I've read about stuff. Not as much alien it's stuff. But it's like, like commonplace yeah. online. It's easy online. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, like we've got like the Facebook group where we can mm -hmm. just sort of like, like you put up the post every Wednesday, like, hey, what's going on? Just like, yeah. like talk about whatever you want to talk about. Yeah. It's easy to have that conversation there. It is different and sometimes uncomfortable mm -hmm. to like meet people and like talk face to face about like, you know, what you think about aliens or ghosts or whatever. But yeah. honestly, like, the the fun of being like oh my gosh I did that and yeah. like oh I had that conversation and I met this person and it was weird and interesting is really really cool both at the time and in retrospect yes it was really I I enjoyed being around people who like and know that stuff a little bit more I mean I didn't think about it in terms like oh I don't think I'm gonna like this but like it was really cool even when um Kathy Kelly who owns the shop was talking about um like gin which are like eastern yeah. kind of spirits and like D J I N N yeah yeah um and it was just like kind of cool and weird that somebody was talking about to us yeah. and it was just like they didn't explain it and we like all knew what she was talking about yeah or at least I mean, at least we did and I was like it was just like <clears throat> kind of just I mean it's I'm not telling you, any, you haven't, anything you haven't heard of before or thought before but it's like it's nice being around like-minded people no it is and it is <laughs> sort of like personally revolutionary like yeah. how frequently are you somewhere and somebody just starts talking about demons and stuff I know it's great it was, I, it was cool yeah, I liked it, was, it it was really cool yeah um yeah cool what do you think I think that's probably it. Yeah. All yeah. right. Um, so actually, no, no, no. Quick, quick thing. So William, what do you think? Do you believe these guys and everything? That see, that's that's the the tricky thing though, because mm -hmm. even when we talked about the fact that Travis Walton doesn't seem to like be like really enjoying this, mm -hmm. there's also no denying that like he's been on TV a bunch. Yeah. Now he's got a documentary that's named after him. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like though that that all came like way after the fact. I like, there agree. were newspapers uh, yeah. articles about him and stuff, but I don't think that he really had like media attention for like a long time after it was the impression I got. And it does seem like his name was dragged through the mud yeah. a lot. Yeah, it so, seems like he like m from what I from what I understood I think he got dragged through the mud like crazy and kind of went like a little internal and tried to like not have yeah, the spotlight. Yeah. And then for whatever reason felt comfortable enough to like Yeah, talk I really about it I publicly. really only bring it up because like the the idea being of like well what did you have to gain from right. it? Uh, when your name's been dragged through the mud, that's not really like there's still two sides of the coin there because it is like he did gain from it. Yeah. You know, so it's like you make something up, and if people believe it, you get attention. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't get money to do projects or whatever, sometimes all you want is the attention. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I can understand why they would have made this up mm -hmm. in the first place. However, 
I do think it's weird that there is no other logical explanation yeah. of why uh, all these guys drive into the woods, one person mm-hmm. disappears for five days, and the others come home. Yeah. Then that guy comes home. Right. What, like, I don't really understand what explain. He was a young guy. He yeah. wasn't, like, he wasn't trying to skip out on a, his wife or something like that. Yeah, it was just random. You know, like, I don't understand the motivation of doing just... They could have all claimed to have seen a UFO together. Yeah. There's no reason for one of them to have to stay behind Yeah. for that. And also, because seriously, like... So where did he go for those five days? Yeah. They tracked his footprints and they disappear? Yeah. Like, I mean, I guess you could say he cleaned them up, but like, I, where were where There's go? always going to be... There's always going to be something that you could be like... This probably yeah, of happened. course. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there's yeah. always going to be something like yeah. that. Yeah. So, like, I almost want to throw away that sort of like rebuttal mm-hmm. of just being like, well, they could have cleaned up his foot. Yeah, of course they could have. Yeah. But where was he for five days? Yeah. Where was he? And why was he there? Right. And what was to, like, I don't know. And also, I think that it's very hard to pull off a con for as long as they would have if this, w- if this were a con. Right. Like, apparently, none of their stories have changed. Nobody has rolled over for some amount of money or decide to do an exclusive interview and say like actually whatever like that's also very rare especially in hoaxy things there's usually somebody who kind of cracks yeah like it just seems too long term and too consistent to be i mean yeah plus like one of the guys was like yeah one of the guys was like i hated travis walton for a long time after this i was mad at him yeah for this happen like it ruined my life talk for like years and years and years like they were like kids in their early 20s or whatever and then the interviewer said to the guy like um so what made you decide you know to be friends with travis again or whatever and he was like my wife and kids like they you know they said that i need to let this go and that you know travis was a good friend and there's no need to you know harbor resentment or something so that means that this guy was harboring this for long enough to have a wife and kids who could talk to him about it yeah if this was like a scheme they concocted i don't know now but then but then here's the real question is Mm -hmm. like all of that Mm -hmm. does that mean he was abducted by aliens right could something else have happened to him there have been some sort of an accident uh you know an explosion Mm -hmm. i don't know you know what i mean like were there other people in the woods that night were the lights they saw from somebody's truck well actually remember apparently remember um jennifer at the end of the talk and everything said that there there were people camping not that far away that night and it was an fbi agent and his family right and that they saw these bright lights and everything. Right, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah and that's not in the documentary. Right. Um, because he didn't want to be in the documentary. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess I guess what it really boils down to is, do you believe, like I said, I said the whole thing about, like, infinite possibilities, anything mm-hmm. might happen. There could be, uh, you know, incredibly advanced civilizations out there with flying technology, able to, tra- you know, travel long distances, whatever. But does that mean that they have made contact with mm-hmm. Earth? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, and like, will we ever see them? Like, mm-hmm. that could all exist. That could all exist out there. Like, a hyper advanced uh, species of extraterrestrial life might exist out there, and we will never make contact with them, I think ever, it's not ever, impossible. ever. Um, so, what it really boils down to, I think, is: Do you believe that aliens have made contact in this way and might take somebody on board their ship? And that's the problem. Because, like, as much as I would love to believe that. I feel like evidence should be mounting in such a way that it's unavoidable mm-hmm. and uh, uh, to, to deny anymore, yeah. I mean. And so far, I don't quite feel that way. Yeah. Evidence of trying to study this, like like the government has and like yeah. that story that came out about like seeing the weird flying thing, whatever. Evidence of trying to study this is not the same as finding evidence of the thing itself. Right. And, like, even when you've seen something that you can't identify, there are so many other agencies out there that Mm -hmm. are, like, other countries, whatever, that are experimenting with different technology. Right. That I just can't dismiss that outright. Mm -hmm. So I'm very open-minded. Yeah. But I don't know that I am willing to uh, uh, take the step to believe in that yet. Yeah. So I think that's that's where I am. I think that something strange happened. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, but I don't know that it means that it was not of this earth. Right. Yeah. How do you feel? 
Okay, so I obviously definitely think something strange happened. I think all those guys are telling the truth as they experienced it. Like, I think yeah. that they all fully believe that's what that's what happened and everything. Um, I don't, I don't know. I really don't know. It sounds like something like supernatural. Yeah. Basically. I mean, even meaning like, you know, extraterrestrial or whatever, like something like that we don't know about yeah. based on everything that they said. But I also have a hard time believing that there's like a physical. So what I almost wonder is kookier, even what they're saying, I think, but, um, it's hard for me to live. There was a physical aircraft that we could potentially touch and be sucked up into. Yeah, yeah. So here's what I wonder, and I, I only <laughs> formed this thought, like, as you were talking, I'm I had so ideas. I'm so excited to hear like, <laughs> what you have to say. So what if there is something or whatever? Like, they saw those lights, they saw all that stuff, but what if, I don't even know how to say it. Like, what if it wasn't a physical thing we could touch, but it was almost like, a, a hologram -y kind of thing. Okay. Like there was some sort of something from like another dimension that somehow projecting into our world. Yeah, yeah. It, like it somehow peeked through the veil a little bit. And somehow he did have some sort of interaction with that thing. Yeah. So it wasn't actually a physical thing like this car, like that we're in or whatever, but like that it was something that did take him yeah. temporarily. Yeah. So he was, are, are you saying like he was sucked into another dimension for five days and spit back out? I guess I am. I guess I am. Interesting. Yeah, I mean that... I'm spitballing. I'm, I'm saying it as I'm thinking it. It but. definitely is crazier only because it's really easy to think of UFOs as just being like spaceships. I mean, literally spaceships, but like we have spaceships. We have the right. space shuttle. Yeah. Like we have cars. Mm -hmm. Like a, a, I think of a UFO as being like, I could get in that UFO and drive it like a car. And so it's really easy to make that like the conversion process to be like, it's a vehicle that you drive Yeah. versus what you're saying of like ripping through the fabric of our dimension. Yeah. And then it's almost like a vacuum cleaner. Like you rip a hole yeah. and it's like a black hole or like, you know, at the end of Alien, yeah. when they when they like plug a hole in the wall and the vacuum of space sucks the alien out or whatever, it's like a, a a hole rips in our reality. Mm -hmm. He gets like sucked into it. Yeah, almost. That's, that's that's what I mean. Yeah. Why does it get spit back out? I don't know. Maybe maybe it is still the maybe it, his theory still holds true that like he was hurt somehow by getting in that beam. Like, yeah, yeah. So like I almost again I am now just saying it as I'm thinking it. So like sure. the sound that they heard that they're thinking is like mechanical whatever. <laughs> maybe that was still something being messed up. Like maybe yeah. there was not a beam that was supposed to be going through. So it wasn't a mechanical sound, but it was the sound of something getting all screwed up, or whatever. And he did get stuck in the beam. But so the same theory. He he got stuck and he got hurt. Yeah. And then maybe they're like, oh crap, like. We just like damaged this human yeah. or whatever. So they're like, all right, we'll just take them and fix them and then we'll drop back off. So the exact same idea, but rather than it being a physical, like metal shiny ship and yeah. being some sort of interdimensional thing. You know what I, I, I really love? The, the unsung amazing part of the story mm -hmm. is that there are gray aliens on board mm -hmm. and then just humans walk in. I know. I, I want to know the, what's the sitch with those humans. I really love that. Were yeah. they abducted and just got used to this way of life? I know they just again acclimated. like Guardians of the Galaxy, like Peter Quill. Are yeah. they are they Chris Pratt? Yeah. Up there. Yeah. Or here's a crazy theory for you. A lot of the uh, theory of UFOs are, are that like the gray aliens that are depicted in stories uh, about alien abductions and yeah. making contact are actually humans from the far future that UFOs when they come to earth are not coming from another planet they're coming from the future they're time machines so oh. what if what if the following yeah <clears throat> here we go earth Burp, 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 burp. Same yeah. as we are right now. Mm -hmm. Eventually, we make contact with gray aliens. We become Earthlings. Okay. We're used to our identity being tied to our planet. The same thing that those in power are afraid mm -hmm. of happening. Um, Get ready for it. We then, because we've sort of made contact, some familiar, f familiarity with the aliens, develop a relationship together. Mm -hmm. Extraterrestrial and Earthlings are working together now. Mm -hmm. uh, we have these spaceships. Something goes horribly wrong in yeah. the future. So a spaceship with both uh, uh, gray aliens and Earthlings time travels back in time. Uh, they're doing some sort of a mission. They're about to take off again. Thump. Uh. They hit something. They look outside. 
Travis Walton. Uh huh. What do we do? We're we're changing the past right now. Yeah. We can't change the past. Yeah. You can't kill someone back here. Who knows the ramifications in the future? Yes. Uh, in the our space time, time continuum. Yeah. In our time, Earthlings and extraterrestrials are friendly. What if by going back in time and killing someone, we unmake this, take him on board? We got to heal this guy up, drop him off. And then we're out of here. We go back to the future. I like this. Right? Yep, I like yeah. this. And that way, yeah. that's why it's Earthlings and aliens yes. on board that ship yes. working together. And even maybe when he was talking to the Earthling and he's like, I, maybe he can't hear me through that dome. Maybe yeah. it's so far in the future, spoken language has changed. Yeah. Maybe he doesn't understand 21st century English anymore. It sounds like I old like English to him. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's good. And don't talk to him because the more you talk to him, the more damage you're doing because you're conveying information to somebody yes, who lives he in the can't past. No. He's not supposed to know. No, it's like telling Doc Brown that he's going to be killed. Do you understand yet? He's not supposed to know. Are we getting through to you yet? Do you understand? Don't say anything about the Twin Pines Mall or what happens there. It messes everything up. It becomes the Lone Pine Mall. That's right, because he hits one. I shouldn't have said that. Yeah. Um, for real, though, I mean, what do you yeah. think of that? That's kind of interesting, right? Yes, that's very interesting. At least from a fun standpoint. Yeah, totally. And it, it ties in all the things. Yeah. You, you, got, you got everything. You're explaining why the humans are there. You're explaining why he can't talk to them. Yeah, yeah. You know what else was cool about tonight? Yeah. Hearing uh, hearing everybody talking about, like, the MUFON conference. What was What's Tom DeLonge's organization? I always forget the <sighs> I know. Name. I always forget, too, but it's go like, ahead. Yeah, yeah the, the master all-stars of yeah. space yeah. discovery, whatever. Luis Elizondo from the NSA or whatever organization is yeah. working with Tom DeLonge of Blink-182 now, uh, and they there was some offhand reference dropped. Yeah, I forgot the person they were talking about, but they were like, yeah, no, he's kind of mad that Tom DeLong got to uh, share this news with everybody. He was kind of hoping that uh, yeah. he could have broken the news, but Tom DeLong did, so I, now so Tom DeLong is the face of this whole thing. I got the impression that it was some sort of like long time ufologist who's very into this yeah. and then like this celebrity Johnny Come Lately who's into it gets to get all the shine. I really loved that as like Me? a brief a brief drop a, yeah. of inter-office politics. Yes, I mean, it was like, just a snippet but same. I Tom I, DeLong made a statement before I could. I've been working on this for 40 years. I know. I really latched on to that. And he's the lead singer of Angels and Airwaves. That's right. How could huh. he? Yeah. He already has everything he needs because of that. How much more praise do you want? He took everything from me. Um, Ooh. The other thing, uh, last thing I think uh -huh. that I've got. Okay. I think one of the things that usually uh, makes it hard for me to really bite into... Uh, discussion of extraterrestrials and UFO stuff is that at a certain point it gets so um, um, nuts and bolts about mm -hmm. science, yeah, and is treated with like such an air of of like sincerity and seriousness. Well, I think that a lot of people, I think, um, who believe in that stuff and are really hardcore about it, really want to prove themselves and feel very strongly that this and isn't don't want to sound. This is stupid. This isn't goofy. Like this right. is actual real science, and I'm going to prove it to you by getting very scientific and specific about it. But you're right; it does get very nuts and boltsy. Yeah. And also, like just by its very nature, we don't know what they're working with. So I, I feel True. like it's like futile to get nuts and boltsy because I know it can be it's totally tough. wrong. It's tough. Like, I, I need an easy way in. Yeah. Like I respect that. I understand sure. that oh, they totally. that like if you start talking about UFOs, people start talking about how oh, you're crazy whatever right and that's just like like i mean it is science right yeah. like there there is yeah there is like a possibility that something is out there I so really why do we dismiss it outright i know agreed but at the same rate like even the things that i'm personally very serious about mm -hmm. i still approach with an air of like humility yeah yeah you know some I mean? people are very and people are, yeah exactly like i feel like even like studying ghosts people are like yeah that's my ghost meter man yeah you know like it's like oh you're having yeah. fun you're yeah. having fun doing this i want some people i, I hope, think some people are very serious Oh, about sure. It, They're know. always extreme. In everything. Yeah. yeah. But, like, I hope there are, there are UFO people out there that are, like, like would sit there and talk to you about, like, their, their, their true, genuine thoughts. Yeah. But also, like, have, like, a tinfoil hat on. I think <laughs> you know they I mean? probably Just are. Be like, I know. I know. Yeah, I know what you think of this, but right. I still really like it despite that. Right. Exactly. Like, that's the thing that I usually like. That makes me go, like, 
tell me more. Keep tell keep telling me more and more and more and more. Yeah, it almost makes somebody more credible to me in a way. Cause I'm like, oh, you're a real person I can relate to. You can chill. And because of that relating, I'm like kind of more into what they're yeah, saying. Yeah. I also the fact that it like people regard as being so so crazy and everything, then like kicks me into a little bit of like conspiracy mode where I'm like, well, where I do get like, well, yeah, they've been held down because like the government doesn't want you to know that they're aliens. So like right. they make it sound so crazy and they put out things that make these people sound so nuts and stupid because they want you to think that they're nuts and stupid. Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? Oh, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. Have you seen the movie The Faculty? Of course I've seen The Faculty. There is a scene in that movie where Elijah Wood is like, yeah, all these movies about E.T. and oh, yeah. like all these alien movies yeah. are put out there to make this stuff seem absurd. Yeah, that's right. So that yeah. no one will no one could possibly believe it. Right. So the move the Hollywood movies about aliens are actually put out there yeah. to to make these things seem less credible. Yeah, they're like propaganda in a Which way. is such a fun conspiracy yeah. theory. Totally. That's like a real like post scream. Yeah. Uh, movie. They're like, very self-conscious about movies. I, I like that movie. Oh, I, I do too. Yeah. 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 Everybody told me I looked like Clay Duvall when that came out because I kind of did at that time. I got, I used we, to get like, oh, we you like look dressed like, the same. I used to get, you look like Josh Hartnett. <laughs> what a heart throb. And I then also people told me that I looked like Jon Stewart. And I was like, I know we dress the same. <laughs> Chris, you know what I say when people tell me I look like Josh Hartnett? What? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I feel like that's what he did all the time. He scratch his head. All scruffy. His hair sticking out in weird ways. Boy, he really had a heyday. He sure did. <laughs> um, all right, what do you think? Yeah. A ski daddle out yeah, of here? Yeah, I think let's skidooch. All right, well, thank you very much for tuning in for a very special episode of Guide to the Unknown. Yeah, thank you. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I really hope you guys enjoyed it, because I, yeah. I, I, th I thought this was super fun. Me too. Let's keep doing things like this when they come up. It's kind of, you know, we usually sit side by side yeah. in the basement and do a show like this. It's kind of nice to be out here in the world like and it. set up a, a phone here and, yeah. and, and just take care of the show. Yeah, it's nice being out here by the Taco Bell. Out in the world. Perfect mm -hmm. light from the Taco Bell. It's like yeah. a Hollywood movie. Totally. We're either sitting outside of Taco Bell or we're on a sound stage on the Paramount lot right now. <laughs> it is Hard set to designed say. to look like a car. Yeah, that's right. Or uh, a spaceship. Yeah. So, uh, hey, shout out to the Travis Walton documentary. Yes, do, totally. Do you remember the full name? I think it is Travis, the true story of Travis Walton. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, shout out to the Paranormal Museum in Asbury Park. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Jennifer Stein. Mm -hmm. It was Kathy super, Kelly. yeah, it was mm -hmm. super nice to, to meet everybody tonight. Yeah. It was a very fun experience. Um, and, uh, yeah, everybody out there, if you enjoy this show, uh, you should know that Guide to the Unknown comes out every Friday on all major podcast apps, iTunes, the new Google Podcasts app, mm. if you're on Android, Spotify, and a YouTube version that you can watch on youtube.com slash talkbomb. You can keep up to date with everything going on with Guide to the Unknown by checking out talkbomb.com slash gttupod. You can find links to all of those podcast apps I just mentioned. You can find links to follow us on all social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, at GTTU Pod. Kristen posts amazing things throughout the week. Uh -huh. You can join our super private Facebook group, uh, where you can talk to other listeners, other viewers just like you, about not only this show, but anything, yeah, anything whatever. you want. And yeah. not even just from the world of horror. Yeah. Literally, just like a little community of like-minded people who enjoy a similar thing hanging out together. Yeah, it's awesome. Which is really fun. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want, you can support us by going to patreon.com slash gttupod. Mm -hmm. Download the Patreon app. Look us up so that you can donate something to us monthly, whatever you're comfortable with. We would greatly appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, give us a review on iTunes. That's yes. a big one. And we've got dozens and dozens of amazing reviews. Mm -hmm. uh, but we can always use more. Yeah, Unfortunately, completely. that's like one of those things things about doing stuff like this or it's like you can never run out of reviews like we can yeah. always use more so if you have not reviewed us yet we would really really appreciate it yes please please because honestly that's also a really good way to let us know that you enjoy this mm -hmm. show and we really really yeah. hope that you do yes um it's a lot of fun to do and uh it only really works if other people out there enjoy it yeah totally um yeah, is, is there anything else that I, I missed aside from... I think, no, just our social media stuff. All right. Um, personally, I am at Chillin' Kristen on Instagram. I am at Haunted Sponge. So we're going to fire up the engine yep. and get out of here until next week. Because you know what? It's a lot of fun doing this stuff, but we've got to get more information. And to do that, we must travel. William, back to the netherworld. 
I put on my seatbelt already. Go away. <laughs> Good night, guys.